Okay, in section five, now let's talk about the LTV to CAC ratio and what it means. So first off, we've already calculated all of our data. So we have the LTV, which is 96,000, divided by our CAC, which is 20,000. So here we see that we have a 4.76 LTV to CAC ratio. This means for every $1 that we put into marketing, we make back $4.76 of profit. So that's a very good return on investment if you're acquiring customers and making back five times that investment over the lifetime with each customer. Investors look at these ratios closely and then operators should of course be benchmarking themselves to understand, you know, do we need to increase LTV? Do we need to get more efficient on CAC? How do we sort of manufacture or engineer a better LTV to CAC ratio? And the higher your ratio, the more profitable your company will be. So in terms of benchmarks, B2B and B2C are a little bit different. B2B startups generally make infrastructure and products that customers need. And B2C startups generally make products that customers want. So naturally, B2C has higher churn rates and lower customer lifetime values. So, um, in terms of benchmarking, bad for B2B is sort of one to two. That's, that's not very good. Probably your customers are turning off at a very high rate if you're in the one to two range. B2C would be one. If you have an LTV to CAC ratio less than one, it means you lose money on your relationship with every single customer. So, you should pause all of your marketing and figure out your business. Average for B2B is sort of the two to five range. That's, you know, pretty good, decent. B2C is more of the one to three range. And then excellent LTV to CAC ratios for B2B SaaS is five to 10 plus. And then B2C is more of the three to five range. There's exceptional companies that have really, really high ratios outside these ranges as well. And the later stage a company is, sort of the higher the ratio should be. If a company's in its first year or whatever, uh, a lot of times these benchmarks will be a little bit lower. I actually have a video about LTV to CAC benchmarks over the life cycle of a SaaS startup. And so I'll put a link to that video in the description below. Section six, CAC payback period plus benchmarks. So we know because of our LTV to CAC ratio that when we invest a dollar in marketing, we make $5 back in profit but the payback period is gonna tell us what are the cash flow dynamics and over what period of time do we become profitable on that initial CAC and then what's the tail on sort of those profits. So we wanna understand once we put in the CAC and acquire the customer, when do we make the CAC back fully and get into the profit part of the customer life cycle? So how many months into the customer lifetime do we pay back our CAC? So in month zero is when we acquire the customer. So here we are saying that we put in uh, $20,000, and so the cash flow of that is negative $20,000. So we've just lost $20,000, and now we need to figure out how long is it going to take to pay that back. Then we get into the profit generating. So we know in our first month, we make uh, gross profit from both implementations. So we have the implementation gross profit, and then we have the subscription gross profit. So in month one, we make $5,890 of gross profit. So let's look here. This shows our cumulative LTV minus CAC. So you take the prior month and you just add the gross profit to it. So first we started at negative $20,000. Now we're at negative $14,000. Now what about here in month two? How much gross profit are we generating to keep paying the CAC back? So the implementation is now done. So now it's just subscription gross profit. So we can just copy this formula down. And what you'll see is that, let's just lock the cell, copy paste. We fully pay back the CAC. So we're paying it back, you know, $1,658 at a time. And it's not until month 10 where the CAC is fully paid back and so that is our CAC payback period. That's when we break even on our relationship with the customer. And then from month 10 forward, all of the gross profit we make is profit for the company. It's no longer paying back the CAC. And then we know because our customer lifetime value is long that we make that CAC back about five more times. So the CAC payback period in this case is, we're saying it's 10 months. 
And so one thing I want to just briefly mention some benchmarks. So the payback period isn't super important. What's really important is the LTV to CAC ratio, because if a business has a really long customer lifetime of five years, then they can have kind of a long payback period and still make a lot of money on the customer. But if your lifetime value is really, really short, some businesses only have a five month lifetime value like B2C businesses, then you, you know, a three month CAC payback period would actually be really long. So always use LTV to CAC sort of as your North Star metric, but here are some benchmarks just to get kind of a flavor. So for B2B, bad is generally sort of like one to two years. So that's pretty long to pay back your CAC. Six to 12 months, which is we're in that range, is sort of average. You know, it's not that long to pay back the CAC, but your, your capital, um, you know, it takes a while to, to get it back. And then less than six months is considered excellent. B to C, um, bad is sort of six to 12 months because there's so much churn that can make the business really hard to run. Average would maybe be three to six months and good would be, uh, excellent would be one to three months.